This last year, in November of 2021, Square Enix released Final Fantasy VII The First Soldier, a mobile game that is a free-to-play battle royale. Although the game has not given us much backstory yet, aside from a few references and cutscenes, the setting is supposed to take place 30 years before the events of Final Fantasy VII. The premise being that Soldier, Shinra's elite militia, is established by selecting the best of the best out of all the players. It's difficult to consider any particular thing that happens in-game as canon because of the gameplay style. So it might be better to view the game more so for what it is. A battle royale. One that appeals to people who enjoy the setting, world, and combat of Final Fantasy VII Remake. My first impressions of news of this game was biased, as I'm not a huge fan of battle royale games. And I'm more eagerly awaiting news of Final Fantasy XVI and VII Remake Part II. But I was shocked to find how much effort Square has put in to appeal to fans of the compilation of Final Fantasy VII. I've found the game to be fun and exciting overall. Although I have my gripes, so this video will be a healthy mix of good and bad. First things first, if you are planning on trying this game or have just recently started playing, I need to emphasize how helpful a controller is. Let's be honest, even if you're an experienced mobile gamer, touchscreen controls are subpar at best. At worst, it's a logistical and mechanical nightmare for many reasons. If you were wondering if First Soldier was also on PC, console, or even able to be ran through an emulator without jumping through complicated hoops, no. The answer is no. And if that discouraged you from playing, I wouldn't blame you. Not one bit. But I'd still recommend giving it a try. Give it a shot on your phone, uh, if you have a compatible controller. I've found that a PS4 controller made the game way more enjoyable. Not just because it's easier to control the camera and your character, but also because you'll quickly realize going up against players who aren't using a controller will give you less of a challenge because their reflexes and movements are limited. Being on the other end of that means you'll likely be engaging someone who is using a controller and they have the advantage over you. Which brings me to gameplay. Like most Battle Royale games, you'll find yourself descending into a place of your choosing on a large map. In this case, Midgar. Once grounded, you'll be traversing the map while a circle slowly closes in toward a center point, where any remaining players duke it out for the title of Last Player Standing. Getting further in these matches means more experience points. You can gain experience from multiple instances, such as completing small tasks and destroying monsters, but it's primarily based in your placing in the match and factors such as how many players have you killed. First Soldier seems to be a shooter first and an RPG second. While the game has you firing an assortment of weapons, you can also melee, summon, use materia, heal, ride vehicles, ride a chocobo, and a few other fun things along the way. I'd like to praise Square for making it a priority to include notable locations and points of interest in the FF7 universe, such as the Church, Seventh Heaven, Don Corneo's Mansion, and a few others. And wow, the attention to detail with these spots is amazing. There are a lot of spaces on the map that are either low-fidelity, memory-saving eyesores, or simply barren, hollow, boring spots with not much to see or do. But you can really feel the accuracy and the respect shown to the points of interest. That got me excited to see what other hidden gems are within reach. It also lets my imagination wander, in terms of what other maps they may or may not add in the future. I love to picture myself starting a match somewhere like the Forgotten City, or Junin, or even Costa del Sol. I'm probably just dreaming here, but I have hope that if they add another map it would be exciting to explore. You can briefly customize a starting character, and there are many accessories and customizations that mean absolutely nothing, in terms of gameplay or combat, that is. But it's a gacha game at its core, so I don't expect anything else. I just tend to focus more on how fun the game is overall rather than aesthetics. Although I do enjoy the character classes. You can change these at any time between matches, and all of them have advantages that make them unique from one another with upgradable abilities. 
Currently, we are about two weeks into season two, and we have a warrior, a sorcerer, a ninja, a monk, a ranger, and the latest addition to the roster, Dragoon, who, for example, can leap high up and then soar around at a generous distance. These classes are subjective in terms of what functions best for you personally, but I've found every one of them to be interesting in one way or another. So, what about the guns? There are currently six types of standard firearms you can find scattered all over the map, with some variations among them. There's assault rifles, light machine guns, submachine guns, sniper rifles, shotguns, and handguns. There's also a handful of flashier, more interesting, and overpowered weapons you can obtain from certain rare chests, for example. The guns you'll find are going to be color-coded, starting with normal, or white, rare, or blue, epic, or purple, and legendary, or gold, each one having more firepower than the last. You can upgrade these in vending machines found across the map, some of which can provide you with potions or materia as well. The vending machines charge you gill, which you can obtain in the match by fighting monsters on the map. More difficult foes drop more gill. I honestly enjoy the fact that you can purchase these things as well as find them in crates and chests. It gives the game variety in how you choose to strategize. Different players have different approaches to how they can out-survive 75 players in an online arena. But on that note, the matches start with 75 players. I've very seldom come across having to face more than two or three other players at the same time. More often than not, it's going to be you versus one other player because of how large the map is, distancing your encounter rate. Although that's not necessarily a bad thing, as it gives you time to hunt down materia and weapons and explore a little bit. Even toward the end game, you might ideally picture five or six people duking it out in a chaotic battle in the last fraction of the map that hasn't closed in yet. Well, not quite. Most of my end game experiences were me sneaking around trying to find the last two players, one of which is hiding somewhere, not moving till they have to, and another player perched up high waiting to get a headshot on you. At least it seemed that way. I've lost many matches that way. Or the other way. The way where you encounter slow, laggy instances during combat. I'm playing on a decent phone with pretty darn good Wi-Fi, and it doesn't seem to be enough. It can get pretty frustrating dealing with that and wondering what you can do to make the game lag less. Perhaps the game itself needs better servers. It seems to happen most when two players start fighting each other, meaning you're liable to have your screen freeze up for up to a few seconds at a time, which can mean death in a game like this. Not everyone can have amazing internet connection or a brand new mobile device, meaning that there are probably a lot of people out there who want to play this game but simply can't, or kind of can, but aren't enjoying it because of game-breaking experiences. Which is all the more reason to give it to us on consoles and PC. But we'll see where it goes from here. And in the meantime, I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt and say that I've been having fun with it, outside of the slowdowns. I think it's exciting to ride a motorcycle or summon a chocobo. Not this thing. This thing handles like a tank. If you've ever played Halo, picture driving the Warthog, except one tire is flat, and it can't go over 14 miles an hour. And also it's drunk. Not a great option if the circle is closing in or you need to make a quick getaway move. So how's the materia? If I'm being honest, it feels a little cramped and tight to use, especially in a tight space, but it's not too difficult to get used to with a little practice. You can upgrade to three levels of materia by simply picking up more of the same materia. It's easy to grasp, but an efficient leveling system. You can hold three different kinds. For example, I found it useful to keep ice as a materia because it has a little bit of a range and provides support by making the other player move away from it. If you're in close proximity with another player, you're going to want to melee or use a shotgun. But the melee attack seems to be harder for players to avoid. Or if you prefer to surprise attack people, you can use parkour to run up walls and get to higher ground. All of it seems fun to toy around with at the very least. So what do I think? I love it. But also I don't at the same time. 
It's a well thought out and unique spin on Battle Royale that every Final Fantasy VII fan needs to try at least once. But I can't help but wonder why it's not on another platform. And I wish everyone could enjoy the game without worrying about their device or a controller. But the game is still fairly new, so I'm holding out hope for some improvements and incentives to keep playing. I've enjoyed it so far, more than I initially thought I was going to. What would you like to see happen with First Soldier? What would you improve? Tell me down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Thanks for watching. I will never be a memory.